Hi everybody, Pastor Jimmy here. We want to continue looking at the book of 1 Peter as we're reading this through. I wanted just to explain a few things to you today from 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2. So go ahead, take your Bible, turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, read the chapter, and then come back and we'll go over some of these verses um, today. All right. Now that you've had a chance to read those verses, we want to start out in verses 1 through 3. We just want to talk about Peter giving us really kind of two distinct commands here. So if you read 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, it says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So he's kind of continuing from chapter 1 here, but he gives us these two distinct commands. He tells us, first of all, to lay aside, and then he tells us to desire. And he tells us to lay aside all the evil attitudes that we may have. There's a whole list of them here. There's a whole list of these things that he's telling us. Uh, malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking. All of these things he's telling us that we need to lay those aside. Any of these attitudes that we might have, we need to lay aside. Deceit, malice, hypocrisy, uh, all these things, all these sins that keep us from living the life that we should live. Also, all the sins that we had when we moved from not knowing Christ to knowing Christ. So all of a sudden, when you go from knowing Christ to from not knowing Christ to knowing Christ, you've been free to these sins, but your your sinful self is still there. And so Peter's saying, set all these things aside, all the old ways, all the things that were in you, set them aside, the malice, the hypocrisy, the envy, the evil speaking. Set all of these things to the side. And as you set all of these things to the side, you need to now desire. So lay aside the old things the hypocrisy, the gossip, the malice, all those things. Lay those things aside now. Uh, Jesus Christ has made you a new person, so you need to lay them to the side. But now you need to desire. And what do we desire? We desire the Word of God, and we desire it as newborn babes. This is like what we should desire in our life. It speaks of the desire that each believer, each one of us that have come to know Jesus Christ, that we should have in our life for the Word of God. You see, a healthy newborn babe has an instinctive yearning for his mother's or her mother's milk. And when things are right, you don't have to tell a babe, you don't have to tell a baby to want the milk. And so it should be the same way with us as Christians. As Christians, we should desire the Word of God. And so we need to desire the Word. We need to inspect ourselves and look at ourselves if we're not desiring to be in the Word and the Word helps us and we want it. And so the, Peter's saying, lay aside all the old things. Desire the new, the, the word of God as a newborn babe desires the mother's milk. But also, he's telling you why. Why do you lay aside one and desire the other? So that we may grow. If you have received the gracious blessing from God, and you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, then we have a reason and responsibility to grow toward Jesus Christ and grow toward God. And we do that through reading the Word. Notice he didn't command us. He didn't say you have to read the Word every day. He didn't command us to do all these things. What he's telling us is as we read the Word, as we study, as we grow, it's going to become natural to us. And we should want that. All believers should be motivated by an opportunity to grow closer to God and grow closer to Christ. So lay aside all the old, desire the new. Why? So that, or desire the Word of God. Why? So that we can grow closer to God, so that we can grow closer to Christ. And then in verses 4 through 10, he begins to compare us, he compares Jesus Christ to a living stone, and then he compares us as, as, as living stones, and we're being built up as a spiritual house, and he gives uh, some verses here that might be a little confusing. confusing. But I want to try to make these simple real quick for you. Uh, Coming to him as a living stone. Jesus Christ is the living stone. He is the cornerstone of all that we do. All that we have is because of him that we have life. He is our living cornerstone. But as we are connected to him, we become living stones as well. Building the spiritual house, so to say. Building the spirituality that we have 
in our lives. So we see Jesus doing that. Jesus is the living stone, the, the called the living stone. We are the living stones that get our life from him. And he was the chief cornerstone, the one that builds everything. So everything we have comes from him. It is because of him that we can be holy. It's because of him that we have light in our lives. So everything we have comes from Jesus Christ. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, he moves on. And he says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorably among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. So here we see uh, Peter once again calling them sojourners, pilgrims, like he did before. This is not our home. This earth is temporary for us. We're foreigners here. We're pilgrims traveling through. And he tells us as we travel through this world, as we go through our day-to-day -day living, we need to abstain from fleshly lust. We need to abstain from the things of this world. We need to abstain from the lust of the world, the things that drive us away from God and make us more like the world. And he's telling them this. He's like, have your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, among those around you. So that when they speak to you as evildoers, they'll look at your conduct, they'll look at your good work, and they'll say there is nothing but God's glory and God's goodness in them. Let me ask you a question. What do people see in your life? What do people see in your life? If people just observed you on the weekdays, at work, at home, in the store, wherever they observed you at, would they know that you're a Christian? Would they know that there's something different about you? Would they know that you've called upon Christ for salvation? Would they know? You see, that's what Peter's telling us here. Peter is telling us this. He's saying, abstain from all these things. Lay them all aside. Desire the word of God as newborn babes. Grow closer to him. Let your conduct be that conduct that will be pleasing to God so that when people come to you and accuse you and call you by out, they, all they see is your good works and so that they too may desire God in their lives. And then finally in 13 through 25, he tells us to submit ourselves to every ordinance of the man for the Lord's sake. And so he goes on and tells us that we need to be submissive to our masters. We need to be submissive to those that are in charge. Now, this doesn't mean that we go and if the government tells us to break a law that we know God doesn't want us to break, that we do it. But he means that we need to obey. We need to be good servants of our community. We need to be law-abiding citizens. We need to do the things that will be pleasing to the courts, pleasing to God. And as we do those things, we get closer to Christ and we have a better witness to others. And then he goes on in verse 23. He, in, in verse 23, he talks about Jesus Christ. Actually, verse 21, he begins to talk about, For to this you were called, because Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his footsteps. That's verse 21. So what he's saying is, Jesus Christ suffered too. And as you suffer, maybe because you are uh, obeying God, maybe because you are under the harsh master, maybe you are uh, being persecuted by the world because you obey God, remember that Jesus Christ set the ultimate example for all of us. Remember that it was through his stripes we were healed, he says, and it was because of him that we have power and strength. It says that in verse 25, he closes, For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Before Jesus Christ, we, we were going astray. Before Jesus Christ, we had no hope, no help in our life. But now because of him, we're healed. We have power to make it through this world. We have hope to make it through this world. So, 1 Peter chapter 2 it can be confusing. It can be kind of hard to read sometimes. But in all in all, it, it can be pretty simple. Lay aside all the things of the world. Lay aside the, the old ways that you had. Desire the Word of God. Study, learn it, memorize it, desire it. As you do, you will draw closer to God. And as you draw closer to God, become a living example for others to see. So that if they try to persecute you or call you an evildoer or say that you don't believe in God or that you don't do the things of God, 
your actions show. And that remember through it all, Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price, paid the penalty for our sins, and through him we are healed and we have hope in our lives. So as you conclude Second Peter, or First Peter chapter 2, as you conclude this chapter, I ask you today to say this prayer. Pray that God will help you desire the word of God. Desire the word. Help, ask God to help you lay aside all those things, all those sins that are keeping you from him. Ask God to help your conduct be for him and reflect him in every day and in every way in your life. And ask him that your witness will be so great that if people come and put false claims against you or look at you and say that you're not a Christian or say that you do not believe in God, that your actions will speak so loud that they'll have no choice but to believe. And remember that all of our strength to do this comes from Jesus Christ because it is through him that we are healed and our sins have been taken away. Say those prayers. Ask God to do that and see how your life can change because you're desiring and studying the Word of God and living your life in a way that is pleasing to Him and a witness for Him.